Hey, it's Brooks here in The Forge. This is one of those weeks where I don't have a, a lot of new things that I can publicly share with you. So I just wanted to take uh, a smaller amount of time than usual, uh, usual like last week ends up being like 80 hours of prep for a video, to cover a couple of non sequitur thoughts primarily focused on retracting some old advice of mine. So if you've known me for, for any amount of time, you'll, you'll know that I'm not the the most incendiary person by, by nature or design. I don't have a, a lot of drama or hot takes or, or things that you'd find on the, the YouTube trending tab. I think if you uh, kept my, my takes out, uh, it, you would have to keep a room temperature lamp with a room temperature bulb on over it uh, just to make sure that it stayed lukewarm. Something I've been thinking about a lot recently is the advice that a much younger, much scrawnier, undernourished Brooks gave in the very first video on this channel, the advice being to draw every day. And there's a little bit of that that I'd like to retract, and I think overall just nuance that I wanna add to it so that we are being intentional and responsible and sustainable as much as possible. Like most advice, right, it's not a one-size-fits-all thing, and this is especially one of those pieces of advice that if you're not being careful can be doing a lot more harm than good. If we were going to reformat and restructure that advice, rewrite it to be better, right, there's probably two ways that I would approach it. It would either be draw every day for a season, right, or four seasons, or draw regularly. I think that for that younger Brooks, a less experienced one, uh, in the earlier stages of their artistic career, drawing every day was a very useful way to, to train and to improve skills. And drawing really has two big halves to it, right? There is the technical side of things and there's the creative side of things. And technical skill is something that needs to be improved upon but before the creative side of things can, can really flourish and so it's valuable and, and useful. Drawing every day for a season is not unlike uh, the programs that an art school student might go through that, where they are drawing every day, right? It's something of a, of a gauntlet, for better or for worse. And I think for certain kinds of people or a certain age, right, that person is perhaps young and hungry and able to deal with a, a large amount of, of output and work and improvement in daily chunks. But drawing every day for, for all people is perhaps not reasonable or possible. Uh, I, I think immediately the most of those who, uh, who have a physical uh, impairment or difficulty, I'm thinking primarily of those with chronic fatigue, uh, something like fibromyalgia, or, or ways or places where your energy is just not there in a given day. You, you might wake up with the best intentions of doing something, and then because of your circumstances find that you're not able to. Uh, mental health is in the same spot. That's something I've dealt with plenty of times where you have the best intentions of getting something done, and then it's it's 6.30 p.m. and there's there's nothing to show for it, despite the constant struggle during that day to get something out. So for someone with either of those circumstances, drawing every day is very understandably not possible. That's a place where drawing regularly would help a lot better. Now, personally, I feel like I am very understanding when it comes to an individual's circumstances, while at the same time, I have no patience for excuses. And there's a big difference between circumstances and excuses, right? It usually comes down to discipline. And discipline is something that, this is not saying that young people in general don't have pressures or, or things on them, but in general, right, discipline is something that you're sort of still learning. I'll give you an example of what I mean by an excuse. So for instance, when I was first starting out making comics online, I was, I, there, were, there was another team of people that had just started making uh, comics themselves, so you sort of follow along, see where like-minded folks are at. They started on a Monday and said, like, we, we will update every Monday with a new installment of our comic, right? And the following Monday, the first update, right? The second comic, first update, they just put out a blog post saying, like, yeah, we... We've been playing a lot of Team Fortress 2 lately. <laughs> like, not even, first of all, why didn't you have like a couple in the chamber with your new comic just to, to account for these <laughs> unforeseen Team Fortress binge sessions? But like, I think honestly, what that comes down to is a lack of prioritizing. And so for me, as an artist and someone who takes things seriously, prioritizing is a huge part of the work and shows that you mean business. 
But going back to this original video that I made with the draw every day advice, I actually ended that tip and advice with drawing every day proves to yourself that it's important to you. If you don't, then it's not, which is incredibly needlessly caustic. And there are other metrics by which to measure the importance of something to someone and the prioritizing that you give it. So if you're someone who is newer, right, you're, you're striving toward improving as an artist, you're not yet a professional, but that's your goal, right? It's important to you to get better. I think that the advice of draw regularly is much more attainable and reasonable, and perhaps in some cases, not all, more helpful to you than drawing every day. So for example, if you were going to draw for one hour every day, seven days a week, and that isn't possible for you, or it doesn't quite make sense for your style of improvement and learning, could you instead, depending on your circumstances and schedule, fill an hourly quota every week of something like seven hours and not allow other things to leak into that time or give yourself excuses for why you can't be 100% focused during that time? I know that for the younger me that, that gradually became this, this person, I know that getting up a couple hours earlier before other work or other responsibilities in a day and, and spending that time on art was very helpful for learning. And that was the everyday that helped. And I would give that advice if that seems like it works for you. But I don't think that it works for everyone. And I think a question of quantity versus quality does come up at that point. If qualifying as drawing every day means that you briefly scribbled with a pencil on a page, does does that actually improve in any, in any meaningful way? No. So quality supersedes quantity. So what we've talked about so far mainly has to do with the technical side of things, improving those technical skills, and the person who is in the earlier stages of their art journey, right? Someone who's a beginner, someone who needs to shore up those weaknesses in their technical skill and improve their understanding. On the other side of things, on the other half of drawing, the, the creative side, and also for those who are perhaps more seasoned, who are professional, uh, or who are in some kind of locked-in long-term schedule when it comes to art, there are questions of sustainability that I do want to talk about. I think there's a lot to be said about what I can't think of a better term for than like hustle culture, right? Or the way that we, especially as artists, measure our worth and value as a person based on our output, where it might be more possible for someone who is, say, in their early 20s or in the earlier stages of their art career, right? Being able to output something at a high frequency or every day. When I did something like 100 days, 100 characters, it's a very difficult thing. And everyone who's done a 30-day challenge or a daily challenge of some kind understands the challenge that comes with it. And I think that as we progress as artists, we might attribute a slowdown in our output uh, to something sort of negative, like a lack of energy or a, a draining. And I think especially in this past year with things that are sort of COVID adjacent, that's very true as we deal with burnout and anxiety and lockdown and all of the struggles that go with it. But I think taking a negative spin on a lack of output or a slowed output isn't giving ourselves enough credit for the quality of work and what is sort of important for us to be putting out. I think that as creative people, even if we are not drawing every day with pencil to paper, we are constantly creating. The creative juices and gears are always turning. Whether we are in a full bore state of production or it seems as though we're in some kind of respite or retreat, those those muscles are always flexing. We're in a constant state of, of supinate and pronate. I can't think of anything better muscle related. Sometimes the water is leaving the Hudson into the ocean and sometimes it's the other way around. I actually mentioned earlier today to Tay, hey, I'm thinking about retracting that advice or adding nuance to the draw every day advice. And she said, but you do draw every day, which isn't true. In, in the recent past, I do not draw every day, so to speak. And it makes me think of something like last week when I made a Klonoa amiibo and spent 80 hours learning and 3D modeling and painting and engineering and problem solving and going through trial and error. I didn't do any drawing during that time. Am I a worse off artist or creative person because I didn't do drawing during that time? 
absolutely not. It ended up being a, a week-long boot camp of another form of creativity and art. And somewhat less obviously, if we're someone who's been working creatively long-term and we take breaks and vacations and time off and purposeful procrastination, I think that that is just as much a part of the creative process. We still need that input. And if we don't, we're kidding ourselves and pushing ourselves into burnout. For something like a, a trading card illustration for me, right? All told, how long does it take me? Something like 14 hours, maybe longer if there's design that goes into it on the back end. But if you said, okay, wipe out all your other responsibilities, we just want you to crank out trading cards. And given your time budget of 14 or 15 hours, then that gives you two days to do a trading card. We'd like you to do two and a half trading cards a week. Absolutely not. There is no way I could get that out in a way where it maintains the standards of quality that I would personally like for them to have or for it to uh, ring sort of authentically to what I want to say with my work. Just because there's some maximum that you can possibly hit does not make it a sustainable or healthy way to create. And I think too of folks who have moved forward in their creative careers away from something where they're just exclusively drawing in the trenches, right? Someone like an art director or some kind of manager or creative executive. Maybe they're doing as much managing and thinking and decision making as they used to be drawing. Are they less of an artist? Absolutely not. They're just, uh, there's a certain amount of nuance or, or meaningfulness or intentionality that has arisen in their work since then. I think it's a maturing of the art process, much like the difference between a, a puppy and an adult dog, right? A puppy is just, this, this is a puppy. And an adult dog doesn't do this unless they're having fun, right? Their form of locomotion, they have figured out how to use their energy in a much more efficient way. A lot of other artists and character designers that I know talk about spending just as much time thinking and pondering and taking in reference and resting and doing other things as they do drawing because it influences and fuels that work just as much as the technical side of things. So asking me now, do I think you should draw every day? I think that if you're on the newer side of things, it's a very helpful way to improve your technical skills fast. If you can't draw every day, or it's not reasonable for you, drawing regularly is a very helpful way to accomplish just the same thing. And if you're seasoned, matured, been doing this for a while, taking breaks and time away from your artwork is okay, as long as you're okay with the fact that your first day back will feel like you've never drawn before. Then there's days like this Wednesday where I wanted to spend some time drawing, but migrating all of the 98 gigs of Procreate data from this iPad to the new M1 iPad ended up taking a lot more trial and error and uh, a lot more time than I thought it would. So am I less of an artist for not drawing Wednesday? Absolutely. So that's my incredibly reasonable and nuanced and lukewarm take on drawing every day for your Sunday afternoon. Thank you so much for watching. If you didn't get a chance to see last week's video, uh, making a Klonoa amiibo, perhaps it's not all the way up your alley from an aesthetic point of view, um, but it was a, a lot of work and a lot of trial and error and actually a lot of cool things and learning that I ended up doing along that journey. It was a, a lot of fun to do. Also, given what I call the inverse effort, to results quotient, this video will do 40 times better than that video. So are you some kind of hipster that enjoys things that are obscure? Well, then my best advice to you is to neither like nor comment on this video because that's the best way to keep it in obscurity. My course, Learn Character Design, is available at learncharacterdesign.com. It's over 18 hours of video learning. It's a comprehensive character design curriculum. It takes you from a place where you're not confident at all in your ability to draw or a complete beginner all the way through to someone who can really tell and express themselves through their character and illustration work. You can get Bigo's backpack over on patreon.com slash bageldenizen. It's a trading card and hard enamel pin in your mailbox every month. This month is Zonette and Quilver. You can follow me at bageldenizen on Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and TikTok. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.